At this point, you understand the concept behind compound interest and why it's more fair in many situations. You can also visualize the difference in growth patterns between simple interest, linear, and compound interest, exponential. And you can even do compound interest calculations using a table. So, what's left? Well, in math, we love to look for patterns. How can we make things more efficient? How can we solve problems more quickly than making a big table? That's what we have left. Sure, we can do compound interest calculations using the simple interest formula, and it works fine, but it sure takes a lot of time to make those tables. What if we had to figure out an amount owed for a compounding of 25 years, maybe for a house? That's a lot of work. There's got to be a better way. So, let's look for a pattern. Back to our compound interest table. And to recognize a pattern, let's fill in this table with some simple variables. Year 1. We'll call the principal P. We call the interest rate R, and therefore simple interest formula I equals PRT. Now the amount at the end of year 1 would be our original principal, plus the new interest, which we can just call PR. The T will always be 1 in this situation and we can factor out the P. We carry that down to year two. So our new principal, because we are compounding, is the amount left over from year one, that is P times one plus R. Our interest rate for year two is still R, and therefore our interest being PRT, or just PR with the T equal one, equals P, 1 plus R, times R. And if we put that in with the amount, we end up with something a little more complicated. But we think back to our group factoring, and we can pull a 1 plus R out of both of those terms. And we end up with P times 1 plus R times 1 plus R, or P times 1 plus R squared. So it's starting to look a little messy, but there's nothing you don't know yet. Year 3. Let's carry our P1 plus R squared down to the third year. Same interest rate. So now we take our new principal and times it by R for our interest, and then we add it to our previous amount. Now when we look at this one, we see that we can factor out a 1 plus R squared. So now we end up with P 1 plus R cubed. And we carry that down to the next line for the principal. And you start to recognize the pattern. Simply carrying our information, same as we did in the table, but in this case looking for opportunities to factor. Nothing really new, but we start to build a pattern. We see that the pattern is simply P times 1 plus R to the power of whatever year we're in. So rather than building a table to determine the amount owed for year 5, we could just use this pattern. If we were asked to determine the amount owed, we could just skip the table and use our new formula. 